we tend to feel if we're going to use 100% of fair cash market value as the assessed value, that uh, there should be uh, one value for all tax jurisdictions. Now, now this would mean, for example, in Dallas County, take a, take a home of worth $20,000. Right now, you're taxed at $0.94 cents per $100 valuation at 25%. Well, effectively, this is like 23 cents per hundred dollars. And uh, my view is let's do away with all the mumbo jumbo and the percentages and, and so forth, and let's just reduce it to, to the essentials and just say we'll tax it 23 cents per hundred dollars valuation for the city or for the county, 95 cents for the city, and 92 cents for the Dallas Independent School District. And you anticipate one agency collecting the taxes and assessing the taxes? Well, statewide, I think we're gravitating toward, uh, in, a, in a large county like Dallas, assessing being done on a county-wide basis. Uh, in some of your West Texas counties and other counties where they're less populous, maybe on an area basis. I think we're gravitating toward taking the assessing function uh, out of the present office of the tax assessor and collector. Now, right now, tax assessor and collector, uh, he issues the license plates, he does the voter registration, and he's supposed to assess and collect all the, all the property tax for the county. And uh, uh, I think we're gravitating toward the assessment function being an independent responsibility manned by professional assessors. Of course, it's quite one thing to talk about speculative land, agricultural land on the outskirts of Dallas. In other cities, it might not be the same booming situation. Midland, for example, has a population of 90,000 people. Will grow, perhaps, but, but not at the same rate. So land near Midland might have a different valuation, in fact, though it's still near a city. I wonder how you cope with that in writing legislation. Lee, this is one of the, this is one of the most difficult areas. Uh, now, the, the man from Dallas, we'll say, who buys some farmland for speculation, and he pays more than the land is producing, uh, I feel if he can afford to pay it, then he ought to afford the luxury of the taxes involved. But for the legitimate farmer who's been on the land here for two generations, and, and maybe the city has grown out close to him, uh, it, it's, it, I still don't have a solution. I notice some areas of Dallas County that, that this, this is the point of controversy. I think Plano went through this. Sunnyvale is going through it. And I'm sure other communities here are going through the same thing. What do you see as an answer? What do you think your committee will, will come up with? Or what alternatives are you considering? Well, I'm disposed toward giving the farmer or the, the legitimate farmer and the legitimate ranch owner some break. But on the other hand, if he's within a city which requires tremendous services, which the school system uh, has, has got to, to uh, continue to raise money to carry on its level of instruction, uh, I can't help but feel if, if, if his land, if he could sell it for $4,000 an acre and it's being taxed at the rate of $800, something has got to give. I don't say go to 4000 but maybe 800 is too low. So we've been talking about real property. A lot of people talk about taxing personal property, bank accounts, stocks, bonds. You're a stockbroker. How do you feel about this? Well, I feel this, that uh, I think the court is saying that we are to or the state is, is to ultimately tax the wealth of the state. Now, you have uh, real property and personal property. And in personal property, you have tangible personal property and intangible personal property. Tangible is like your automobile and your home furnishings and so forth. In uh, the intangibles, this is stocks and bonds, bank accounts, cash value of insurance. Uh, with respect to some corporations, some states contend that computer programs are, are intangible personal property of corporations. Uh, I feel that to, to be constitutional, we've got to take a look at taxing all of it. We've also got to take a look at removing a lot of the exemptions that exist today. Um, you may have seen a recent newspaper article where one of our advisory committees taking a hard look. Uh, let's take, for example, religious property owned by religious institutions. If it's an office building or if it's some type of business, uh, why should it not be taxed the same as, as other comparable businesses or buildings? Uh, house of Worship, uh, I'd say it would be exempt. Uh, but we can go on and on. 
even governments sometimes, uh, school districts sometimes, will buy 15 acres in a growing area knowing they're only going to use three acres for school. They speculate on that uh, extra acreage. Uh, perhaps this ought to be taxed.